did. Um, when the session is done, uh, it'll take about a half an hour or so for Google to process the recording, and then it'll be, be available to all of you in your Google Drive under your shared with me um, area. Um, and if there's anybody else that uh, needs access to it, um, I can go ahead and um, add that as well. So just let me know. So uh, this session is about Google Drive and sharing permissions. Um, it is sort of the um, critical cog that makes all of the Google stuff work, makes uh, the collaborations that uh, you're able to do with the Google products work. Um, I've had sessions like this uh, in person that we've often spent three or four hours going over this material, uh, but typically in that you know scenario we're doing um, practice and people are sharing stuff with each other and, and that kind of a uh, thing. Um, yesterday when we did this session, we pretty much landed right on an hour and a half. So um, I do have another session after this one, so we'll have to stick to that. Um, but we, I feel pretty confident that we should be able to get through all the material today. So for starters, uh, how do you get to your Google Drive? Um, I'm assuming that you all know how to get to your Gmail account already. You know, just google.com, sign in, and then um, either go to the Google Apps button and click on Mail or click on Gmail. The same kind of concept is uh, you can use to get to your Drive. Once you're logged in, you can go to your Google Apps button and click on the Drive icon. Or you can go to a new web page and go to drive.google.com. Either one of those will get you to the uh, Google Drive window. And once you're there, it'll kind of vary a little bit depending on how you have things set up as to whether you know yours looks exactly like mine does. But we'll go over some of those different options uh, throughout the session today. So let's talk for a minute about what uh, Google Drive even is. Um, essentially, it's your storage in the, in the cloud. So you can um, store any kind of file that you want there. Um, the stuff that's in your My Drive, and we'll talk about My Drive a lot today, um, is sort of your private location. Um, you can choose to share the items that are in that My Drive with other people. Um, either individually or in mass, uh, and we'll talk about uh, how to set those permissions as well. Um, it's accessible to you from anywhere that you've got internet access. It's accessible to you from any modern uh, device, whether that's a Windows or Mac um, computer, a smartphone, a tablet like an iPad, um, any device essentially that can um, access the internet pretty much can get to your um, Google Drive. Now, if you're using uh, a device like a um, Android phone, an iPhone, or an iPad, um, what you want to do is install the Drive app from the Android or the um, Apple Store. Um, just go into that store and search for Google Drive, and the app looks just like what the um, looks just like the um, little icon here looks like kind of the triangle with the three different colors. If you install that native app, um, then you are able to do a lot of the same functions uh, through your phone that you can do through um, you know, a regular computer. Because of our Google Apps for Education subscription that the, uh, the schools have, um, Google graciously provides that to us for free. And part of that is unlimited storage uh, within your Google Drive as well. So, you know, you think back to the um, old days, which might even be today for a lot of us, where, you know, you're used to storing your stuff on the network server or storing, storing your stuff on a flash drive or your local computer's uh, hard drive. Um, eventually, that could potentially run out of room. In the case of uh, storing stuff in your Google Drive, you don't have to worry about that because they give you unlimited storage anyway. Um, I already talked a little bit about the fact that you're able to share your files and folders with others. You have complete control over that. Um, it's pretty easy to do, but we'll spend quite a bit of time. Um, about the last half hour of the session is almost all going to be covering you know, how to do the sharing, how to set the permissions properly, what 
setting this permission means versus that permission and so forth. And um, another thing to be aware of is that there is a uh, program called Google Drive File Stream that you can have installed on either your Mac or Windows computer that allows you to save and access your files that are in your Google Drive as if they're a drive letter on your local computer. And actually, in fact, it stores local copies of those files on your local computer as well. So if you happen to be offline, you're in an airplane, you're somewhere, you don't have internet access, um, you still can get to your files even though they're technically primarily stored in the cloud. So the big advantage of uh, having that utility installed are programs um, that are not Google Drive aware, like Microsoft Word, for example. Um, you'd be able to go into Word, create a Word document, and still save it directly to your Google Drive, um, even though Word itself doesn't necessarily know how to get to your Google Drive. Word just thinks it's saving it on your local computer. Um, and then, of course, Google Drive does have direct integrations, though, with all of the Google products, Google Classroom, Docs, Sheets, Slides, Forms, and a lot of newer third-party applications um, are allowing for direct integration with Google Drive as well. So there's a ton of advantages to using it. Um, and those are just some of the, the key ones. So let's talk a little bit about what your Google Drive screen is going to look like. Um, or may look like, like I said, um, yours might look a little different than this. But some of the key components uh, in the upper left, we've got a button that we can click on uh, for new. That's going to allow us to make a new um, Google Doc, Sheet, Slides, upload a file, upload a folder, make a new folder. There's a bunch of stuff hiding underneath that new button, and we're going to use that several times today. Um, the next thing that I've got um, pointed out here is my drive. And my drive, again, is sort of your personal storage location and all of your folders and subfolders and all that kind of stuff will be stored under that. Below uh, my drive is shared drives. And shared drives is where stuff that other people have shared with you will appear. So it's still stuff you have access to, but it's stuff that's owned by somebody else, OK? And unfortunately, that can get confused with shared with me. And actually, I just confused the two. I just said the two backwards myself. Shared drives is um, what Google used to call team drives. And um, shared drives is a place that um, you can set up like a single folder that everybody in your department has access to, for example, or everybody in your building or everybody in your family, something like that. We'll talk about some of the disadvantages of using a shared drive a little bit later, um, but that's what it is, is, is uh, stuff that you and your teammates, if you will, um, all have access to that stuff. Shared with me, the one below, is what I had already described earlier. Um, that's where you're going to find stuff that other people have shared with you. So they're the owner. They've created a Google Doc. They invited you to be, um, you know, to have permissions to view it or edit it or whatever. Those items will show up and shared with me. Moving over to the right side of the screen, um, the arrow is maybe a little deceiving as to what that's pointing at, where it says grid slash list view. Um, it's actually meant to be pointing at the sort of um, charcoal color, uh, colored icon with the, the little lines through it. So what that does is it just toggles back and forth whether you're in grid view, which if you look down below where I see all of my folders, like this METL, 22i, 2018, all of those are folders. I'm currently looking at my folder list in a grid view. If I clicked this icon, it would switch me to list view, and it would list one folder per row, and they would just be in a long row going down the page. The advantage of the list view is you can see some additional details, like how much size it's taking up, what the date was that it was last modified, who the owner is, some of those types of things. But for the most part, just working in the grid view is going to give you um, 
you know, more stuff on, on one screen and, and easier to find what you're looking for quickly. Your quick access is these four larger blocks that I'm showing here. Um, that changes all the time. So if you're working in Google Drive regularly and you're constantly working on different things, what it's doing is it's sort of determining what the, the most recent items that you worked on were, and it's listing those there at the top in your quick access. So it's just a shortcut, a quick way for you to open up a file that you've been recently working on without having to go and find it within your folder structure. But like I said, don't necessarily count on the same files always being there because as you work on other things, it'll automatically adjust that list. The next thing down is our uh, ability to sort our list out. So right now I can see it sorted ascending by name. I can tell that because of the word name there and because of the arrow pointing up. If I wanted to, to reverse sort like Z to A, I could simply click on that arrow and it would flip everything around. I could also click where it says name and change that to be something like last modified. And that would allow me to sort things out by date that the folders and files were uh, most recently modified. And then lastly, the area that you're going to work in the most is the actual list of folders and files themselves. So you can see those all down here. Folders you can also see over here, like where it says my drive, there's this little tiny arrow just to the left of that. I could hit that arrow and it would actually sort of act as a drop down menu. It would expand out my drive and I would see my folder list appear there as well. I can do the same thing with shared drives, um, as you can see below that too. So either way um, is a way for me to look at my list of files. There's obviously more to the screen than that, but those are kind of the, the primary things. One thing I didn't mention and call out specifically, and it's, it's right there at the top, but I think people have a tendency to underutilize this, and that is the search bar. So, I mean, you know how to go to google.com and do a search. What this does is that it specifically allows you to search for files or folders within, you know, what's, what you have access to, both your My Drive as well as shared with me. It's a very, very powerful tool, um, lets you find what you're looking for very quickly, um, and we'll spend a little bit more time on that later, but you can be very specific in what you're looking for and um, find what you need without having to do a lot of manual rummaging around through your folder structure. So my drive, um, and I'm, this is probably going to be the last slide that I'll have up here and just refer back to them as needed. But, um, you know, every folder that you are the owner of that you initially create and every file that you're the owner of and initially create will appear in your my drive or a subfolder of my drive. Um, ownership is a very, a very important thing as far as this is concerned because it controls what access you have to the file. It controls whether you'll have permanent access to the file or not. Um, what I mean by that is let's say that somebody else creates a file, they're the owner of it, they share it with you, and then at some point their Google account gets deleted. You know, they've retired, they've um, stopped working for the district or whatever, and their, their Google Drive goes away. Well, if they've just shared that with you, you're not the owner, that content is going to go away along with their account. So you need to be aware of that. There's some ways that we can work around that, um, but just be aware. Um, you can take files that are on your local computer, your local network, any files that you locally have access to on a flash drive or whatever, and upload them into your Google Drive so that they now become cloud-based and accessible to you from wherever you are. Um, so let me pop out of here. Oops, pop out of this window and go back to my Google Drive here. So a few things to point out uh, as you're looking through this list, and let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit. So something right off the bat you might notice is some of the folders are just file folders. Others are file folders that have this little symbol of kind of looks like a person sitting on top of them. What that symbol is an indication to me is that that Active Directory folder that I'm pointing at right now has been shared with somebody else. I'm still probably the owner of it, um, but I've given somebody else access 
It could be one person. It could be a thousand people. It's only going to show the one little picture, but it's a quick, you know, indication to myself that I've given somebody else permission to access that folder. Um, other things that we can tell from, uh, I mentioned actually earlier about it switching from the list view to the grid view. So let me show you how that looks. I'm just going to toggle over to list view. And as, as I said, now each folder is just going to show up as a row. I can see who the owner is of that folder when it was last modified. And if it was a document or a, you know, Google slide or something like that, <clears throat> it may have a file size associated with it. Um, they don't do file sizes generally for folders. Let me scroll down to the bottom here where I can get down to some actual documents. There we go. So here are some things that aren't folders, they're actually files. So I can see that this is a Word type of a document. It's taken up 7 meg. I don't really care how much take, space it's taking up simply because we get unlimited storage anyway. Okay, but I can see Michelle Rybant is the owner of that particular document. Um, she shared it with me. Now, one question that might come up is you might say, um, I thought the stuff in my drive was owned by me. And yet I'm seeing in my drive something that says it's owned by somebody else. So both of those statements are correct. Um, if I create something new, I'm the owner, it'll immediately go to my drive or a subfolder thereof, but I can also go into the shared with me folder, find something that somebody else has shared with me, and I can tell it to add it to my drive. I might do that just from convenience, uh, from the convenience sake, so that I don't have to always go looking in shared with me to find that particular content. I can put it into a folder under my drive that makes sense to me, that I can easily find later, um, you know, that kind of a thing. So that would have been the case with this particular document. Michelle is the owner. I would have at some point gone into my shared with me folder and told it to add it to my drive. It's still her document. All that this really is is sort of a shortcut or a pointer at that document. Um, you know, I still can't take ownership of it or take control of it, but um, it is at least in my drive and maybe in my mind at that moment, it made it a little bit quicker and easier for me to find. Other things to, to be aware of is, you know, the different symbols are gonna tell you what type of a document it is. So I can tell that this is a Google Sheets document. This is a Microsoft Excel native document. Notice that it, they both have the exact same file name, 911info.xlsx. Both of them are exactly the same file name. That's something that Windows would never let you do. It won't ever let you save two files in the same folder that are the exact same name. Google doesn't care. You can have as many files in that folder with the same name as you want. Because in real life or in, in reality, there's a very unique, very long uh, file name that you just don't see that does differentiate the two as far as Google is concerned. So this is a Google Sheet. This is an Excel file. I technically can open both of them in Google Sheets. Um, I would have to kind of do a little converting for this one to open up, but they would um, open ultimately. Here's another example. Here's a Word native document. This is a Google Docs native document. So those symbols just indicate, you know, what program that they're natively meant to be opened up in. So you'll see a lot of that kind of stuff. PDFs, uh, here's a PDF. Google Slides will show us kind of a yellow box. Here's a Google Slideshow. So those are probably the most common ones you're going to see. PDFs, Docs sheets, slides, but you can save any kind of file you want up here. Uh, it can also be a video file, audio file, whatever. In the early days of Google Drive, they only let you save Google-related um, files and a couple other exceptions like PDFs um, and so forth, but they've lifted that and you're now able to um, store pretty much any kind of file you want in your drive. Okay. So if I want to make a new folder here, what I would do is I would go to new, 
and then I would choose folder right at the top. I'm actually going to go to my training folder just to kind of keep everything together here and go into my Google Drive subfolder. I can see I've got one thing in there currently. It's my presentation that I've been showing you. I can see that this is stored under my drive, a trainings folder, and then a Google Drive subfolder. If I want to make a subfolder under here, new folder, give it a name. I'll uh, just say 4820 training. Takes a second, and then there's my folder. Okay, I can make as many as I want. I can make subfolders of them, subfolders of those, et cetera, et cetera. I can also tell, of course, that it's not shared with anybody. I don't see any little person sitting on that folder. If I need to rename it, I could right click on it and I have a choice here to rename it. And it would automatically do that for me. I can also upload um, files or folders from my local computer. So that's also found under the new menu. So if I want to upload an individual file, I would go new file upload. It's now asking me what file I want to upload. And are you able to see my browse box right now? Yes. So let's say that um, I want to upload this, um, whatever this GroupWise 7, February 2010, nice old PowerPoint file. I want to upload that file. I'm going to click on Open. It's now uploading the file, and there it is. So I've now uploaded that. It's still in native PowerPoint format, but because of the fact that Google Slides is compatible with PowerPoint. I can open it up for kind of a preview mode. And if I want to, I can actually say fully open it in Google Slides. And if I do that, then it'll actually let me edit the document, add more slides to it, and do whatever it is that I want to do within the document itself. Anytime you do that kind of a thing, you definitely want to go and you know do a quick look through the document and make sure that um, it converted properly and the, the fonts all look good and the graphics didn't get messed up and that kind of stuff. But generally speaking, it does a pretty good job of um, allowing you to natively uh, or to, to do the conversion without you know messing with it. So I'm going to close that back up. I'm going to just upload a couple more just to show you um, a setting that um, you can adjust in your as it relates to uploading files. So I'm going to just go to my downloads folder and I'm going to grab a, um, a Word type of a document and a PDF. And what the heck? Uh, yeah, let me find a Word document. There's one and a spreadsheet. Oops. Darn it. I needed to be holding the control key as I was clicking all these so that it grabbed all three of them at the same time. So what I did is I grabbed three separate files at the same time by holding the control key, CTRL key on my keyboard, and then randomly picking through the list until I had each one that I wanted. And then when I uh, clicked on OK, it uploaded all three at the same time. So I can see that I've got a, a native Word document here. I have a, this one actually, is must be a text file and um, I thought I had selected the PDF too, but maybe I lost that one in the, the process. So you can see how these came in. There is a setting that you can change up here in the gear under settings to tell it to automatically convert files that you upload to the native Google version of the files. So if I do that and I go ahead and I go and um, upload these again, actually, I'm just going to leave the ones that are already there, say file, upload again. And I'm going to see if I can find the same files. Probably not, but I'll grab that one and that one. And I'm going to grab a 
PowerPoint again. And I'm going to hit OK. So basically going through the same process, but because of the fact that I turned on that um, checkbox under my settings, what it does is when it uploads the document, it determines if it's a spreadsheet, that it'll automatically convert it into Google Slides native format. If it's a Word doc, it'll automatically convert it into Google Docs. If it's a PowerPoint, it'll automatically convert it into Google Slides. And so you can see here, for example, this Google Slides Basics one um, came in. I can tell that it's a Google Slides native format because of this icon, whereas this other one I had uploaded was a PowerPoint as well originally. But because I didn't have the convert checkbox turned on, it left it still in PowerPoint format. If I open this one, I just kind of get this preview window initially that I can't really do any editing with. I'd have to manually click on open with Google Slides in order to get it into that mode. Whereas, oops, let me reopen that. Whereas the other one that I had uploaded with the convert utility or checkbox turned on automatically is a Google Slides file. When I double click on it, it automatically opens in slides. I can natively edit it. I don't have to do any extra uh, steps at all. So I personally have that feature turned on all the time. Um, it really depends on, you know, how your workflow is, whether you still feel like you need to use the Microsoft Office programs uh, in order to work with these documents uh, after the fact or not. So, but that's how the icons will show um, and that's how you upload a file. You can also upload an entire folder worth of content by new and folder upload. And then you just, of course, go and find whatever folder it is that you want to upload. And um, it would then not only upload the folder, but all the contents of the folder would automatically be uploaded as well. So let me grab this uh, folder right here. Actually, I meant to just hit upload. It's telling me that it's got uh, eight items inside of it. So it's gonna take a few seconds to upload uh, the folder itself as well as the those contents. And when it's all done, there's the folder, three bit item detail, whatever that is. If I open it up, apparently there was a subfolder called the same thing. And then inside of there, there was a whole bunch of different PDF files. So all of that came in at one time. So if you're trying to transition from storing your stuff in your My Documents or in your network drive or on a flash drive or whatever, um, fortunately, you can upload the stuff um, kind of all at once uh, using the folder upload process. And it's um, the time that it takes will depend on just how big the files are. It really doesn't matter how many there are so much as how big they are individually. <clears throat> Other things we can do from the new menu, we can create a, a Google Doc, a Google Sheet, Google Slides. We can go under more and make a form, a drawing, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of things in here. Okay. And if you've been in any of my other sessions, I've always encouraged you, if you're going to make a Google Sheet, if you're going to make a Google Form, go to Google Drive first, go to the folder you want the, that document or file, whatever you want to call it, to be in, and then go to the new menu and create the document from there. That way you already know that it's saved in the right place and you don't have to worry about moving it around after the fact. Okay. Um, you know, I say here on the on the slide, get organized, build some folders up right off the bat. Um, otherwise, you just end up with a mass amount of stuff under my drive that you get organized later. So creating stuff um, in drive, that's pretty much what I just talked about. Um, I didn't mention the untitled, so let me mention that just briefly. If I go back to our training trainings folder, and let's say that I, oops, went to the wrong one, Google Drive, there we go. So let's say that we make a new Google Doc. Every new Google Doc that you create is by default just named Untitled Document. So I start typing away in here, I get my document all created, 
it's perfect. I close out of it. Google never asked me to save. In the uh, Microsoft Word days, you know, that would be a lost file. But one of the great things about the Google apps is that every time you do any kind of edit with it, it will automatically save that file and it will continuously save the file anytime you make further edits. Because of the fact that I closed out of it and I never changed the file name, it just left it called untitled document. So there is my document. If I go and make another new Google Doc, and I close out of that, in a second here we'll see another untitled document. Yeah, there it goes. Took a second. So again, back to the concept that Microsoft never would have let you have two files in the same folder that are the same name. Again, Google doesn't care. You could end up with 100 different untitled documents. Definitely not good practice, so be aware of that. Um, how do you change the name of it? Um, from out here, I can rename it just like I could rename a folder. I can right click and just choose rename. So maybe this is, we'll just call it document one. Or within the document itself, while I'm editing it, so if I reopen our untitled document, if I click up here, this is actually the file name. So if I click up here, it actually will grab whatever you have as the first couple of um, words in your document, and it'll guess that that's what you want to use as the file name. But you can edit that to be whatever you want. If I want it just to be called document two, that's fine. And if I close back out of here, you'll see within a couple of seconds, now that's called document two. Okay, so I can rename from within the document or I can rename from the folder itself. Other things I can do from this right click menu, I can move it to another folder. So that's move to, let's say that I wanna put it into my, um, that folder that I just uploaded, whatever it was called, three bid detail or something like that. So it should be, there it goes. It's listing out the folders that I have access to. If I want to put it under a higher level folder, then what I would have to do is go back so I could get to my trainings folder or up to my My Drive folder, and then I would go back down into whatever folder it is that I want to save it in. And this can be a little bit irritating if you've got a lot of folders because it only loads so many at a time and you got to kind of scroll and wait and scroll and wait. But um, it's you know not that bad. So I'm going to go back to my Google Drive. I want to put it in this three-bit item detail. So I find that, and then I just simply click on Move Here. And if I was to now go and open that three-bit item detail folder, I would see there's my document. Okay. Another way that I can move um, folders around is I can do it by dragging. So I could take my document one, and since I can see my three-bit item detail folder here or my, my 4820 folder here, I can literally just drag and drop it. And now that uh, document has been moved in there. That may not be so easy if the folder is sort of up a level and then is buried down underneath other folders. You can expand out your My Drive over here on the left. So I'm hitting the little arrow next to My Drive. And then I could kind of scroll down and maybe I want to put this into the new teacher folder. So I could then take and drag directly over to the left and drop it on there. And if I hold my mouse there, because that had a subfolder, it actually opened the subfolder for me. And then I was able to drop it into the subfolder without having to, um, you know, have opened that subfolder ahead of time. So I'm not going to move it in this particular case. So that's how you can move a file. I can right click again. I can add my file to my starred list. This is very much like starring an email in your uh, Gmail account. It's just a quick way for you to get back to the item. So you can see it's added to starred. If I right click, I can see that it's starred because my choice now is to remove it. So all that that does is it sort of acts as a filter. So I could go over here in my uh, menu on the left, and I could tell it to just show me my starred items. 
and it would search my entire Google Drive for any folder or file that I've already starred, and it would give me a list of just those items. So here's the one that I just did. I just uh, starred this download passcode um, file. I'm going to go back to that folder. I'm going to remove the star because I really don't need it starred. We've already talked about how to rename. You can view details. This is going to give you the stuff about who's the owner, what's the date, what's the size, and that kind of stuff. Um, I can also make a copy of it. So when might you want, want to make a copy? So let's say this um, presentation that we're working out of today, if I wanted to take that presentation and um, I want to sort of start a new one but use the basics out of it, I might just right click and say make a copy. It will automatically uh, create a second copy of the file. It'll just take and put copy of in front of the file name. So if I look in my list now, there it is. I've got copy of Google Drive and sharing permissions. And then I would be able to just go in and let's say rename this. Maybe this is going to be my uh, Google Forms training file. And then I would just simply open that up, make whatever edits I wanted to. Um, but I would have the, the same basic structure of the slideshow already done and just need to be able to edit the, the actual detail of it. The other place that make a copy comes in handy is with the ownership issue. I mentioned earlier when we were looking under my drive how that M Michelle Rybrandt uh, file was out there and it said that she was the owner of it. Remember, at any time, because she's the owner, she could choose to take away my permissions. She could go into that file and say, Bob Frost no longer has any access to it. As soon as that happens, it would disappear from my my drive, my shared drive, it would, you know, my shared with me drive. Um, it would disappear altogether. So what I could do is I could right click on that file and say make a copy. That copy is now mine. I am the owner of it. Nobody else has permission to it. I can edit it all I want. If she takes away permissions from the original file, it doesn't impact that copy, and um, you know, if, if her Google account goes away, we don't have to worry about losing access to it, uh, any of those types of things. The other advantage to that is maybe what she shared was just a template that she was expecting people to fill out and customize for themselves. So she might have shared that intentionally and then turned around and said, hey, why don't you make a copy of this and then you can fill out and customize it, you know, for your own use. Usually, if that's the case, the person will give you view-only permissions to the original file, and that way you can't mess up their original by accidentally filling in all you know your customization. Um, if that's the case, and they've given you view-only permission, when you open it, you'll actually see at the top that it'll tell you that it's view-only, and there'll be a button there to request permission or request access. If you were to click on that, it'll generate an email to the owner asking them to give you access. You don't need to do that if the intention was for you to make a copy in the first place. So let me just go and take a quick peek. I don't know if that's the case with that particular file or not, but um, if it was, then it'll give us a good example of that. Uh, let's see, so was that that one? I should have had this turned on, sorry. And I'm going to show you actually a trick at the end of the uh, session, too. I've got a slide that talks about this, about how you can, um, yep, how you can um, edit the URL to your document or the link to your document to add the word copy to it. And that way, when you share the document out with somebody else, when they go to open it, it will automatically come up and ask them to make a copy of it. So that sh saves you from getting a whole bunch of emails of people asking you permission and, um, you know, permission that you're probably not going to give anyway. So here we go. So I do have view only access to this document. Um, you can see that if I try to click in here, I can't actually get my cursor to stay so I could edit it. I can highlight stuff so I could like copy it and paste it somewhere else, but I can't edit this at all. And you can see my toolbar is pretty limited. 
So here's that request add, edit access button up here. If I clicked on that, now I'm gonna bug her and she's gonna have to decide whether to give me permissions or not. But if she made it view only in the first place, most likely she, that was her intention. So I could go over here and say, make a copy right from within the document. And like I said, it would then ask me what I wanna call it. I'll just say Bob's 10 and 10. Folder by default is gonna to go to my drive, but I could click on that and put it in a subfolder of my drive if I wanted to. I'll just leave it under my drive. I'll hit okay. It'll now go ahead and make that copy. It'll open the copy up inside of um, Google Docs and um, it'll be a fully editable version of it then because it's now my copy. And if I was to look at the sharing permissions, I would see that I am the uh, owner of it and I am the only one that the document is currently, um, that currently has access to the document. So you see here, I don't have the request access anymore. My toolbar is fully here. I could go up and start editing any of this text. This message is just coming up because of, of the conversion that it did from Word. Uh, anyway, I can do editing. Uh, if I want to, if I go under share, I can see that it's not currently shared with anybody. Private, only you can access. I'm the owner. So her original file is still there. If I was to look at share on that, I can see that um, anybody with the link can just view that particular document. So those are the permissions that she had set. And if I was to go out and look under uh, my drive now, um, you know, I would see that that document, the copy that I made is now sitting there. And it should be alphabetical. So if I scroll down into the Bs, there it is right there. So this is now owned by me. There's the copy that I just made from within that document. Okay. So let me get back, if I can, to folder we were in there we go so what other things can we do from that um, menu when we right click on a file uh, we talked about make a copy uh, download we haven't talked about download yet so download is going to take that file if it's a google doc google sheet or google slide it will convert it into the microsoft equivalent program Excel, Word, or PowerPoint, and it will bring down a copy into your downloads folder. So I don't know if you saw that happen in the lower left, but if I click on um, this right now and do a show and folder, um, unfortunately you can't see the folder probably, but um, I'm now seeing my downloads folder and I'm seeing that this file is sitting in that downloads folder as a PowerPoint file. The reason that it automatically converted to converted it to a PowerPoint file is because there is no such thing as Google Slides other than on the web. There's not like a program I can install on my computer for Google Slides to be able to open up that file without being on the internet at that time. So um, do uh, docs will convert to a Word doc and Sheets will convert to an Excel file. So very compatible back and forth. Let's jump back to our slides, make sure I'm not missing anything here. So workspace, um, I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. Um, if I right click, you see this choice called add to workspace. I'm gonna come back to that on another slide. Um, and I think we've talked about everything else here. So let's move on. So actually workspaces is next. So let's talk about that now. So workspaces is something um, pretty new. Um, actually, I really didn't know much about it until I started putting together this presentation and happened to see that uh, up here on my um, right click menu. So I can say add to workspace and then I can either create a new workspace or if I had a workspace already created and the file wasn't already in it, I would be able to pick that. So let me pick a different file. Let me pick say this one right here and say add to workspace. You can see that I've created a workspace already called trainings workspace. So I'm gonna click on that. It's now added to the workspace. 
So now the question is, what the heck is a workspace and where, where do you even go to find it? Um, I had to Google it because I couldn't find anything called a workspace. And of course, rather than calling it workspace, what they called it is priority. So over here on your left, above your My Drive, is something new called Priority. If I open up Priority, I will then see any workspaces that I have. I only have one that I had created. I called it Trainings Workspace. And there is the stuff that's currently in that workspace. If I click on View, I can see that it can hold up to 25 files. So there is a limit on how many you can put in a workspace. I can also, right from here, add files to the workspace. So the question, of course, is why, what is a workspace? Why would I want one? You know, what's the point of it? So if you're working on a project, let's say, and that project is going to contain maybe a budget file that's stored in one folder, and it's going to contain some instruction documents that you've put in another folder, and it's going to contain some Google slide presentations that you've put in another folder, You've got all these files and all these different folders, but they're all related to the overall project that you're working on. What the workspace allows you to do is to sort of bring all of those files that are in all these different places into one common place. So you don't have to go looking for them individually and try to remember, oh, the budget files in such and such folder, the presentations in such and such folder. If you've added them all into the project workspace, you can come to the workspace through the priority menu, and then you can open those files directly from here. I can rename the workspace from here, I can hide it, or I can remove it. One of the questions we had in one of the earlier sessions was, can you um, share your workspace with somebody else? And I don't think so. I haven't been able to find any way to do that. It doesn't mean that you can't individually share the files because, of course, I could just right click on this and go to share and share that file with somebody. I can right click in any of these and share them out with somebody. But if I right click on my workspace, I don't get any option to share my workspace. So I don't think that that's possible to do. Um, you might say, why don't you do a shared drive or a team drive? Um, that could work, but that's really a different concept than what we're talking about here. This is really just an organizational tool more than anything else. If I say hide workspace, all that it does is it shrinks it down and at the bottom, I've got a hidden workspaces and I can always pop that up and I can tell it to unhide and bring it back. So um, I don't think there's any limit on how many workspaces you can have. But just remember that the limit is 25 files in any one workspace. So let me go back to our training folder. Oops, I was there. One of the things I was going to try is can you add a folder to a workspace? And it doesn't look like it. Nope. OK, so that's what a workspace is. Um, it's called priority, and that's kind of what it does. So now sharing files and folders and setting the permissions so that people can do just what you need them to be able to do and nothing more. So as I talked about at the beginning of this session, um, the ability to share files like this and folders is one of the key concepts that allows a lot of this other Google stuff to work the way that it does. It ultimately is what allows, you know, 100 people to be working in a Word document or a, a Google Doc all at the same time or a slideshow all at the same time. Um, but setting the permissions is key so that, you know, suddenly your slideshow isn't getting edited in the middle of you presenting. You want to make sure that you've given view only permission to it. Um, something to be aware of is that you can set permissions on a folder. And if you set the permissions on the folder, everything that's inside that folder by default is shared with those same permissions. So as I talked about earlier, if you look at a folder and you don't see the little person icon on top of it, it means it's not currently shared. So if I was to right click on this and go to share, and I'll just share it with somebody. And I'll, for now, I'm just gonna give her edit access. I'm gonna hit okay. 
So give this just a second. And then when the screen refreshes, I can see, okay, that folder is shared with somebody. What that also means though, if I open this up, notice this folder is shared. And while it doesn't show me the individual icons and all these PDF files, if I was to right click on any of these and go to share, and I could see it here, but I can also hit advanced, I can see that this is also shared now with Melissa. So when you share a folder, anything that's inside that folder already will automatically get shared with that same set of people, whether it's one or more, and every one of those sub items will get those same set of permissions. So if instead what I really meant to do is just give her access to maybe one of those PDF files, I can come back here to share. I can remove her by clicking on the X, save changes. I, my visual indication that it's shared goes away. If I open this up, this is no longer shared. If I go to any of the individual PDF files and right click and go to share, I'll see that those permissions were removed all the way down the line. So taking away the permissions to a folder similarly removes permissions to all the things inside of it. So now I could though say, you know what? I need her to have access just to this one file and I can pick what kind of access I want. I'm not gonna notify her because I don't wanna be bugging her over the stuff that I'm just playing with. Um, at this point, she would have access to that one and only one file. Um, she wouldn't even know that it was in these other subfolders. It wouldn't matter to her, um, but she would be able to get to that file without any problem. Okay. I can also share a file or folder using the little person symbol up here with the plus. So that's a sharing icon. Um, I can do the same thing if I've got my folder highlighted. I've got that same icon there. And if I'm in a Google document, I can go to the share button in the upper right of that Google document, whether it's a sheet of slides or uh, docs. And the good thing about it is the, the permissions and the sharing window is the same no matter which way you do it. So once you figure it out once, it doesn't matter which method you go through, you'll see the same set of choices. So this slideshow, for example, I had already shared with all of you. I didn't share it with you individually. You can see if I click on advanced, still I'm the only one listed, but I did a special feature where I said, anybody that has the link to this um, presentation is able to view it. So we'll come back to that in just a second. Let me jump, actually jump back here. Okay. So let's talk uh, in a little more detail about what we see here. So as you saw, we can type in one name. I could type in 10 names. I could type in a thousand names. I could put in a group address. So we have TISD all, which is um, all staff members. Um, if I had some kind of a list, I could copy and paste from that list into here. So I populate who I wanna share it with. I then decide, do I want them to be able to, let me get rid of this one. Do I want them to be able to um, view the folder only or be able to organize, add and edit content to the folder? So those are my two choices when it comes to a folder. If I go to an individual document and go to the share settings, same concept, put people's name in, this time though, because it's a document and not a folder, I get three choices. Do I want them to be able to edit the document, to be able to view it, but also comment on it, or just be able to view it, okay? So in the case of a slideshow, if you want your audience to be able to all follow along with you and all individually open the slideshow, you would need to give them at least view access. If you were building a slideshow as a team and you wanted all your team members to be able to open that same slideshow and be able to edit it collaboratively with you, you would need to make sure that you give them edit access. And comment, like I said, is kind of in between. I guess I would say they can view all the content. They can't actually change any of it, but they can add comments and say, you know, I think you should change this to, to red. I think you should remove this sentence or whatever. So I'm going to leave it on can edit. 
when you send out um, or you save your sharing, it's generally set to notify the person that you've done this. So it's going to generate an email to them. So you might say something like, you know, this is the file we discussed earlier. And then leave it on notify people. When you click on send, they'll get an email that says this is the file we discussed earlier, and it'll have a link directly to the file in it or the folder if you've shared a folder with them. It will also, though, automatically show up in their shared with me area. So if they can't find the email or they don't, you know, they deleted the email, um, that's fine. They can just simply go into their shared with me folder and they would be able to um, access your document that way. Or they could use the search tool up at the top to get to it as well. Another way that you could um, give them access. Let's say you shared it with them two months ago. They've emailed you now and said, you know, I know you want us to work on this document. I can't find the original email. I can't find it and shared with me. Can you tell me where it is? So what you could do is you could open up the document itself. And this link up here at the top, the actual um, address of the page, you could literally copy that and then go and email that link to them. Just paste it into an email. You can also write from here, right click and say, get shareable link. And it tells me that it just copied that link to the clipboard, which just means that if I was to, again, go into an email and start creating a message to her, I could just hit control V or I could right click and say paste and it would paste that link directly into the, the email message. So that way to send them uh, a direct link to the document without even having to try to describe, this is what it was called, go into sh shared with me, see if you can find it. You could just simply send them di the direct link to the file. You can also see that link if we go under share, there's get shareable link here. And um, we're gonna go under advanced now and you'll see the shareable link also here. So it shows up in a bunch of different places. They're all exactly the same link technically. Um, and let me actually point out, if you were to look at a document, this, well, of course it didn't leave it there. Let me open this up. When you look at the address to a Google type document, this part of it right here, is what makes it unique. So when I talked about the fact that you could have a hundred different files all called untitled document, every one of them will have a different string of characters and numbers that um, make up the actual real file name or link to that document. So that's how Google keeps them separate, um, even though you've left the name untitled document on all of them. So that, um, that part of it is unique to every single document. So some more um, kind of advanced sharing uh, features beyond just typing in somebody's email address and, and sharing it with them that way. Let's see, make sure I'm not skipping anything here. I already showed you that you can hit the X next to somebody to remove them from the list. This next uh, area is when you um, maybe want to share something with somebody and you maybe don't even know what their email address is. So I'm going to go back into share and you can do it from any of the methods we've already seen. I'm going to go to advanced and in the advanced area, I can currently see that it's private. Only I can access it. If I put Melissa back in here, I just never saved it earlier when I did that. So I'm going to okay that so you can see, Okay, now it says specific people can access and it lists those specific people. But I can click on change right here. And if I click on change, I get five different ways that I can share this document out with people. And I'm gonna start at the bottom because technically they sort of get progressively broader as you work your way up. So it starts by default being that only specific people are able to access this file. And that could be just you, or it could be the people you've specifically added already. If we move up a level, now all of a sudden, it's anyone in your organization 
meaning they've got a tuscolaisd.org email address or a vassar.k12.mi.us email address, whatever your email um, domain name is for your school district, it would list that here. If they have the link to the document and they're logged in with their school email account, they would be able to, in this case, view the document. I can also give them edit or comment access just like I could out on the other screen. If we work our way up to the next step, anyone essentially in that organization can find and access the document. So that technically means that you don't even have to give them the link to the document. If they're logged into um, their school email account, they could use the Google search bar in the Google Drive and be able to find the document that, um, that you're working on at this point. Again, you'd have to choose what level of access. The next step up, and this is one that I use very uh, regularly. This is how um, this um, slides for this class actually were shared with all of you. This is what I would recommend if you wanted to post a document um, through Facebook or Planbook or Twitter or your website or whatever, um, set it to this level. Because this isn't as saying that anybody anywhere even if they're not signed into a Google account, can open up the document. And again, what can they do with it? Can they view it? Can they edit it? Can they just comment on it? So that one, again, you want to make very, very sure that you're only giving them the level of permission that you really need them to have. Most of the time, it's going to be view. So in our case, um, we've got a number of Google type documents that are essentially like templates, like you know, a transportation request form, a field trip request form. So we made those forms inside of either Google Sheets or Google Docs. We set the sharing to this level right here. We made it view only, and then we posted the link to that document on our main website. So anybody can go to our website, they can find that link, they can click on it. It'll allow them to open that document up, view only, and then back to the conversation that we had a little while ago that um, they would have to make a copy in order to fill the form out. And then that copy would become their own, so they would still either need to print it or share it um, or email it to somebody in order to, you know, turn it in, if you will. This, the same concept can happen with this top one, although with the top one, um, your document is now searchable on the web. So anybody in the web, anywhere in the world can get to that document if they do you know, enough searching for it. They don't have to have the specific link um, that you've shared with them or you've posted to your site or wherever you know, it is you're gonna post. So if you're gonna create a document and you want your students at home to access it, um, you don't know if they remember their school email address, um, they could access it with their home personal e email address. Maybe you want their parents to, to access it, um, whatever the case might be. The second choice down is probably the choice that you would want. So I would set it to that. I'd make sure it's on can view. I would hit save. I can now see right here, anyone who has the link can view. In my case, Melissa still can edit it. So it can still be a combination of these two. So she's got more permissions than the rest. I'm still the owner of it, and then I would just say done, and now I could, again, grab that shareable link. It's copied to my clipboard, and if I had the ability to go out and edit our web page, I could put that link on our web page. I could go to my Facebook account, paste the link on my Facebook account. Whatever it is that you're going to do with it, you would then be able to do with that link, and anybody that clicked on it would get you your document. Okay. So I'm going to show you the trick right now related to the whole make a copy thing, because um, as I mentioned, if, um, if you set this now so that anybody in the internet um, can view it that has the link, and you went and you provided them the link, you again don't want a whole bunch of people clicking that request access button and you getting inundated with people asking you to give them elevated permissions that you're not going to give them anyway. So there's a little trick you can do where 
before you send the link out, and I'm just going to open up a open this up in this Google document so I can show it to you. I'm going to paste the link in here. Okay, so there it is. Remember I talked about the fact that this part right here is specifically the unique part that, that um, points at that particular file. Let me zoom this in for you a little bit. Oops, too much. And I guess I should have just done this. Okay, so this part right here is the part that's unique to that particular file. So we don't want to mess with that. But this last slash here, if I just get rid of this extra junk and I put the word copy in there, then I share this. What will happen is if they open that link, I'm going to take and paste that in here. See how it's got copy in it, just like I just did? If I hit enter, this is what they'll get. It'll take them to this screen where they can make a copy. It'll be their own copy, and then they won't end up with this version of the document that they weren't able to edit anyway because it was view only. Now, if it was a document that was just informational, you weren't expecting them to fill anything out, then you wouldn't have to do that because the reality is you weren't expecting them to edit it anyway. But if this is some kind of form you want them to fill out, some kind of homework assignment you want them to fill in, this would be a way to um, sort of force them to get a copy um, themselves. So does that make sense? It takes a little bit of extra editing. You know, it's not obviously um, the most obvious thing in the world that that's what you need to do. Let me see. There we go. Um, and you might get a little nervous about, you know, what part of this do I edit? But you basically just have to remember that you're looking for that very last slash after the long file name that, that Google assigns to it. This all by itself would open the document as well, but it would open the document again with whatever permission level you've given that person. Okay. So I do have a slide about that someplace. It might be on the bottom of this one, let's see. Yes, it is actually. So under this using a URL, URL link to give people access slide, uh, the very bottom here, I try to give you an example of that. So this upper link is a link to a document um, with all the normal edit stuff at the end of it. And all that I've done is taken and trimmed off all that extra stuff at the end and changed it to the word copy. And this one would force them to make a copy. The one above um, would give them a view-only view um, and potentially result in them requesting access from you. OK. Um, so I've also got a slide that kind of dives a little bit more into detail on those five different choices that we were just going over, um, kind of highlighted in red. Um, and these are actually in reverse order, right? So from bottom to top. So off is the default. On anyone in your organization that has a link you might use, and probably the most or second most likely is on anyone with a link, period. Um, you might use if you want it to be publicly accessible. So those are the three that I'm sort of comfortable with, you know, recommending to you that um, that are okay, depending on permissions that you set. So shared with me, we've kind of talked about this a little bit, that that's where anything that anybody has shared with you goes. If I go into my shared with me folder, I'm going to see a whole bunch of um, folders that have been shared with me. And if I scroll down here, once it refreshes, I'm going to see a whole bunch of documents as well. People get a little bit ADD over this um, shared with me area. You know, if they are, um, you know, I I'm not at all a neat freak. Um, but, you know, people have a tendency to, to look in here and be like, oh, I've got to organize this stuff. This is just mass chaos. I've got all these files from all these different people. Um, don't, don't worry about shared with me. Um, you know, if you need to go and find something in there, 
it's going to be listed either in alphabetical order or date order, depending on how you sort it. Um, if it's a folder, it'll be at the top of the list. If it's a file, it'll be down below. You can turn on the details if you need to sort search by like who it's owned by, you know, if you know who the original owner of it was. And you can also use this very powerful search drive bar up at the top. And I'll show you again that in just a minute. Um, but while we're looking at these files, I'm going to point out a couple of things. So let me just right click in a couple of these and see if I can find one that I haven't already added to my drive. <clears throat> So I can see that I can add it to a workspace as well. But what I'm really looking for is add to my drive. And so far, they've already been all added to my drive. Here we go. So this one here has a choice of add to my drive. So if I don't want to have to go to the shared with me folder looking for this document in the future, it could be a folder as well. I can right click on it. I can say add to my drive. It now puts it directly under my drive, not in any subfolder. If I want to, right from here, I could click on Organize. And then I could specifically tell it what folder that I want it to, put it, to be put in. You know, go out and look for the, the subfolder. Um, once it's in that subfolder, then I can just go to my drive, go to that subfolder, and that document will be there. It is not, though suddenly my own document. It is still a shared document. It's still owned by somebody else. So I'm going to move it to my Google Drive training folder. And then I'm going to go to that folder. And so here is that file all of a sudden. This was in shared with me before. It's now in my drive, trainings, Google Drive. And so from that standpoint, I can say, all right, I've kind of organized it. I've put it where it belongs. I put it someplace that makes sense to me um, without, again, worrying about trying to organize the shared with me stuff. If I right click on it and I go to share, I can still see that I'm not the owner of that file. And actually, if I was to try to share this particular file with somebody else, it's actually going to tell me I've got to ask the owner of the file before it would allow me to invite anybody else. I can see that it's been shared via anyone with the link can view. Remember, that was a second choice from the top on that list of five that we had. So that's how they shared it. If I really want this to become my own document, we talked about this earlier, I could right click on it, I can make a copy. And now this copy, if I look at share, I can see that I'm now the owner, only I can access, and I don't have to worry about um, anything changing with that document or the person pulling it back away from me or any of that kind of stuff. What's important to know, though, is if this document is something that you are sort of collaborating with others on, and somebody else now goes and changes that original document, your copy is not going to change. It's like you went to the copy machine, you made a copy, you gave the person back their original, they now go write lots more stuff on it. Your piece of paper doesn't change any, only theirs does. If we had kept this one and continued to use the one that's owned by the other person, when they made changes to it, our copy would... our I should rephrase that, our copy doesn't change, but the version that we have access to from them will change as they change it, okay? So I think people have a tendency to feel like anything that's shared with them, they should quickly make a copy of, but just realize that when you do that, um, your copy is now static. The only changes that are reflected on your copy are changes you make, not the changes that the original owner or any other collaborators make. So it's important um, to differentiate between those two. Let me get rid of this copy. So this is really just a shortcut, if you want to call it that, to the one that's in your shared with me folder. 
and it's a shortcut to whoever originally owns it as well. So what is the difference between shared with me and shared drives over here on the left? Shared with me again is stuff other people have created and shared with you. Shared drives is really a completely different concept. It used to be called team drives. Um, I don't know if Google changed it because Microsoft has something called team drive and they were threatened to be sued. Who knows? I don't know. But um, they changed the name um, a while back to shared drives. Um, it stinks that they did that um, as far as the name that they picked, just because now it does create a lot of confusion between these two since they're so similarly named. What a shared drive is, is basically a collaboration space for people in like a department or a building um, or a company. So if I open up the um, TISD Information Systems Department shared drive, all of the stuff that's in here, whether it's a folder or a file or whatever is in here, everybody that's been given permission to the shared drive has equal access to everything in there. And that's a key difference between you making a folder and sharing it with some people and you making a shared drive and adding people to the shared drive. If you add people to the shared drive, everybody in there is considered equal. Everybody has full edit access to everything there. Anybody can make a folder, anybody can delete anything, anybody can edit anything. So people have a tendency to think that they want to use shared drives until they find out that they don't have the ability to make certain things view only or make certain folders not accessible to certain you know, subgroups of people. Um, everybody is considered equal in a shared drive. So that's the big difference between that and you making a folder, sharing it with some people, because when you do it that way, you have granular control of every single file and folder in there as to who can see it, who can't, whether they have view access, edit access, comment access, all of those types of things, okay? But if you've got a, you know, a team and everybody needs equal access to stuff, it is a, a convenient way of putting some stuff together. So this metal gen general membership, it's the ISD tech directors group, you know, all 50 whatever of us in the state have equal access to that uh, folder. Um, all of us can open it up. We can look in the, um, the meeting agenda folders. We can all have equal access to edit those agendas and so forth. But at the same time, I could go in there personally and delete all of it. And nobody could stop me because I'm an equal access with everybody else. Okay, so that's shared with me and shared drives. So I mentioned drive file stream uh, earlier. Um, it's a program that would have to be installed on either your Mac or Windows computer. You may, if it's your school-owned device, you may have to have your school tech person install it for you if you don't have permissions to install programs on your computer. Um, but what it allows you to do is have your Google Drive show up in your file explorer just like it's any other drive letter on your computer. So just like it's a flash drive or it's like your C drive or your you know, home drive on your network, whatever drive letter that happens to be. So the advantage of that is you have access to all of your Google Drive files, even when you're offline. So you jump on an airplane, you've got your laptop, you're in airplane mode, you still could see everything that's saved in your Google Drive. Uh, you're, you know, at home and you don't have good internet access, you can still see everything saved in your Google Drive. You could still work on that content as long as it was in um, the Microsoft format at that point. And actually, even the Google apps now give you an offline sort of editing capability. Um, the other big advantage of it is that if you're still using the Microsoft programs, so if you're in Microsoft Word or Excel, for example, when you go to File Save, there's no choice for you to pick your Google Drive without something like Drive File Stream. So by having Drive File Stream, I can now go into Word, type a document, file save. When I get my browse list where I normally would pick whatever folder I want, I could go over on the left 
and see my Google Drive as a drive letter. I could pick my My Drive folder, I could pick a subfolder under there, and I could save my document, and it would be in my um, Google Drive folder within a matter of seconds, as long as I had inter internet access at that time, because what that utility is doing is it's constantly synchronizing what's in the cloud to your local copy and what's in your local copy up to the cloud. So it's doing everything it can to keep those two exactly the same as each other. As a result of that, you wanna be careful that you never install that utility on a shared computer. Um, you know, maybe, um, you know, you go to a family's place for a long weekend or something like that. You say, well, I'll just put Google Drive file stream on your computer for you real quick so that I can get quick access to my stuff. Well, what it's gonna do is it's gonna sync all of your Google Drive stuff down to their computer and it's gonna be there um, indefinitely as well. So that creates a potential security concern. Um, so you just want to install it on, on your primary computers that you're going to that you're going to use personally, whether it's your laptop or you know your home desktop or whatever the case may be. So not only uh, Office programs, but like Adobe type programs, you know Photoshop and uh, Acrobat uh, Pro and all those types of things, uh, all of those suddenly become sort of cloud enabled because of that Google Drive file stream uh, being there. What you end up doing when you install that program is you end up giving it your username and password and that's how it is able to access in the background your Google Drive because that utility has your credentials stored in it. Um, I'm thinking I'm forgetting something. But I guess let's open it up for questions. And if it comes to me, it comes to me. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. So if you got uh, any specific questions, feel free to um, unmute and ask them. Um, so Josh is asking for the link to the slideshow for later. And it should be in the calendar invite, but um, paste it in here as well. Any other specific questions, comments, concerns? I know it can seem kind of overwhelming, you know, to spend an hour and a half on this kind of a thing. Um, yeah, you can share that with staff for sure. Um, actually, let me double check though to make sure that anyone with the link can access it. Yep, anyone with the link can view. So if you share that link with anybody else, um, they can view it. Um, you know, the reality is though, most of the time you're just going to go to my drive, maybe make a couple of folders and then just make sure your stuff is saved in there. And, um, uh, if you're not doing a whole lot of sharing, you know, that part of it maybe doesn't matter a whole lot, but in the situation we're in where, you know, a lot of people are creating stuff for students and families and so forth to access at home, it's, it's important to understand how those sharing permissions work. Um, so you give people just enough access to do what they need to do, but not too much where, you know, somebody can edit your document when you didn't intend for them to do that. Okay. Well, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to um, bid you farewell. I'm going to stop the recording and I've got one more session to do today. So I may see some of you uh, in the Google Hangouts meet session, which is next. So we'll see you all later and have a good day.